Megan, you missed the lawn and you got the strawberries. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well, August is the time to cut your strawberries back, so why would I crawl on my hands and knees and do it by hand? Get, get the big girl toys out. <laughs> <laughs> because all that other foliage is going to die back anyway, uh -huh. so only the crown is what you want for the following year. Okay. So you can mow them with your mower or tractor <laughs> and then fertilize and you're ready for next year. Excellent. And I know you have some tips on uh, tomatoes too, so let's go I over do. there. Okay. I do. <laughs> Jan, before we talk about the tomatoes, I noticed you kind of went around the borage plant so you didn't mow it. And why did you save that one? Well, years ago, I planted borage in the uh, vegetable garden, and now it comes up wherever it wants to <laughs> by seed. But I leave quite a few. Um, I'm really convinced that because it brings in so many bees, oh. it helps pollinate the zucchini and the cucumbers and anything else that uh, flowers and needs pollination, even tomatoes. Ah, so that's a great idea. I just leave a few and, and it, I think it works. Ah, well. I have no research to <laughs> prove that, but I think it does. Here's something else I found this All morning. Right. Um, this is a leaf miner and this is on uh, a nasturtium and this one is on a beet leaf. These are different insects, but mm -hmm. they both do the same damage. It's a little fly that, that lands on the leaf that then they, the, uh, they lay their eggs in between the layers of the leaf and then the larvae hatch and then they literally mine in between the layers. Mm -hmm. Then they hatch into a fly and go to the next leaf. So you'll see this on columbine and all sorts of different things. You can pick it off. Um, there's really no treatment that you're going to use. Oh, okay. So that, at least we know what it is. Right. Okay. And here's <laughs> my tomato on steroids, but actually what it is. It's, wow. an, it's an indeterminate tomato, which means it has not determined yet how tall it's going to get. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's going to make lots of tomatoes. It's going to make lots, but I'm actually going to do some pruning on it today and prune out the, the ones that I know that aren't going to have a chance in this season to develop. Kind of late, yeah. And so thin it out a little bit. So the tomato, there are tomatoes said in here. You can't see them, but they're here. <laughs> this is a Moscovich, which is a... Um, which is an heirloom tomato. How do you know which ones to prune and which ones to leave? It's kind of up to your discretion? Yeah, or? well, it depends on how I'm feeling, I guess, at the <laughs> okay. moment. But I mean, if it, here we are in August and yeah, they're though. just flowering, there's no fruit set on it yet, so you could take those. If you think we're gonna have summer into the end of October, then you could leave it. <laughs> I wish, I that. totally wish. I'm not thinking that, but here's what a determinant tomato looks like. This is an Oregon spring and okay. it's, it's not going to, it has a lot of tomatoes on it, it's much smaller. So if you have a small space garden, that's what you're going to want to choose. Or in a container. Or in a container, yeah, oh. or patio type. Okay. And here's some um, Look at this egg eggplant plant. on steroids this year. And I really attribute this to totally having it in a raised bed and okay. having the soil warmer. Yeah, it, because it was such a late season, really right. raised beds really help with that, trying to get um, up to speed. Yeah, usually in the ground, when I've planted the eggplant in rows, it might be half this height okay. and not nearly as lush as these are. So uh -huh. this has been a big success this ah, year. Excellent. Well, as always, great tips, and thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Okay. Thanks.